I want to read out of the book of Matthew about the withered fig tree. And I was just talking to my one friend about this. And years ago, when the Lord revealed this to me, um, it was just so amazing. She was reading out of Mark, but in Matthew as well, it tells about the, the fig tree. And I just reminded, and it was so amazing because I got it the first thing this morning as well. And the Lord was just reminding me here, it says the fig tree withered in Matthew 21 verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it, but leaves and said to it, now this is Jesus speaking, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And I just want to read out of the footnotes. On a fig tree, the fruit is formed first, then the leaves appear. So the, there was leaves on there, but no fruit. Now on a fig tree, normally it'll, the fruit will appear, then the leaves. So one would expect to find satisfying fruit on a tree in full leaf. The fig tree is used here to designate Israel of Jesus' time, whose religious system and heritage appeared to hold promises of satisfaction. So the curse extended not only to the tree, but also to the nation of Israel. An Antrak parable showing the judgment later, the judgment that was to come upon Israel's false profession. The nation had professed righteousness and had maintained all the external forms of godliness. But while professing faith in God, they rejected the Son of God. So they were sitting there. They didn't believe what Jesus was saying. The Pharisees and Sadducees were trying everything. They were always coming against him and trying to catch him out and do everything. They were tithing and they were speaking the Torah and they were going around and they were, you know, but they had no fruit. A good tree will be known by its fruit. The fig tree, if it had fruit and the leaves, it would have been known by its fruit. And it's likened, we are likened to a tree. So the leaves our works. They were going about doing all the works. All the external things they were doing were great. They were tithing, they were talking, they were in the uh, synagogues, but they rejected the Son of Man, the Son of God. They rejected Him. And the fruits of the Spirit, it tells us in Galatians 5.22, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, 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 Kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, ouch, ouch, self-control. A good tree will be known by its fruits. So they weren't known by any of them. They didn't have love. They didn't have peace. They didn't have joy. He said they were like, they were rotten to the core. That is what Jesus said they were. So a good tree would have been known and that you could have eaten off the tree because it was good. A good tree, tells him Matthew, will be known by its fruit. So I just wanted to share that today. And we're going around sometimes and I know for years I was trying to go out. I wanted to do all the works for the Lord and do Sunday school. When we, when we first started off, I think we've done Sunday school, hostess, running the kids around, doing the music. I think I just did everything there possibly was to do. But in the end, once I started learning about the fruits, oh no, to concentrate really on working on the fruits of the Spirit, love, joys, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, all those things, that is better. So then we'll have fruit, good fruit, and then when we go out and do the works, we'll have both. So the external will be just as good as the internal. And I hope you got something from that, and I just wanted to share it tonight. Have a wonderful evening wherever you are. God bless.